Texas, Red Mile, reaches from southern South Dakota to Texas. In the 1940s, water extraction became a major thing for that aquifer. That aquifer dip is very much warmer, in that the reach hard trip is very slow. It's almost an uh, exclusive granite aquifer, so they don't, we don't get deep down there as we get here. It's also the high plains. Huge drawdowns from agricultural use, gas and oil. In the 1940s, that extraction began to increase. Since then, local people's wells have had to be dug another 300 feet. That aquifer has lost 300 feet. It cannot be recharged because it doesn't recharge the way ours does. When that aquifer is gone, it's gone. Again, one of the biggest ones in the world. We sit on the single largest source of fresh spring water in the world. It's right here in this aquifer and this spring. So it's really important, I think, again, for you to realize the importance of what and the people you represent. And where I grew up, boards like this that were tasked with making decisions for our community in our state, whether it's water rights, mineral rights, land rights, zoning, had to apply for the next seven generations. That's 140 years. If you all would even just consider the ramifications of your decisions for the next 50 years, I think you will find this decision is critical to what happens here in the next 50 years. The Ogallala Aquifer will be dropped by 2028. That's eight states that will simply not have access to water. It will look very much like Yemen, which has been out of water for about four years now. These are really important things for you all to do. Seven days ago, in Traverse City, Michigan, an appellate court denied Nestle a permit, an expansion permit. They keep the permit for what they're already taking. But they denied the expansion permit because Nestle's argument was they were providing an essential public service. Well, it turns out they are not. Neither are they here. Bottled water is not an essential public service <coughs> anywhere that tap water can be drawn from your pipes. On the basis of that alone, I urge you to consider not extending this permit. They are making, they're meeting market demand not even taking out as much water as they've already been permitted. They don't need it. They're not drawing it. Why would we then extend that? Good question for you to ask yourselves. Uh, one of the other decisions for the uh, Traverse City, Michigan, uh, by that court, was that the land was not zoned commercial. I'm not sure what the zoning is at. Um, Jimmy Spring, but I believe most of the land is there is Ag3, so that might be something to look into. And again, Jimmy Spring doesn't own the water, they own the land. That's really important. The other thing I want to ask about is, do you all have a plan B for where the water will come from should the aquifer collapse, which the amount of water in a karst, in particular in a karst ge geographical system, is what holds that together. As you know, a karst system looks a lot like Swiss cheese, if you will. You take a cross section of our land, you're going to see holes everywhere. <coughs> Those holes are filled with water because our aquifer is so close to the surface. That water creates a pressure within our cave system and our stream system that keeps that lime rock from collapsing in on itself. I think so. White Springs and areas north of us are a really good example of how both collapse and extraction have dried that spring up. And it's about the water. 91% of all plastic is not recycled. <coughs> I know everybody puts it in their recycling bin, but this is a fact. 91% of everybody's recycling goes away, but it does not get recycled. That's a huge number. So we're seeing that more plastic bottles is not going to be at all beneficial on the grand scale, especially when you're in a place where water is readily accessible 
without putting it, wrapping it up in a byproduct of the petroleum industry. If somebody said to you, here's a glass made out of oil, and in the middle there's some water, <laughs> you drink it? Because that's what bottled water is. I think it's with you um, probably should be looking at a social change because... Uh, Absolutely. Not only change social change, business, but probably. manufacturing change. Now, Nancy is, uh, has, has a big platform of they're making biodegradable bottles. Who picks those up? Where is the biodegradation plant? And biodegradable to what extent? The half-life of range of plastic, which is forever. So how long is that for forever? How much of that biodegradable product also contains toxins? A big enough percent that when there is no biodegradation plant that picks that stuff up and makes sure it biodegrades, it's in our rivers. Nestle told us last night, uh, and Southern Springs, they're very much involved in local water cleanup, clean up along the rivers and the riparian zones. Why are we not involved in not creating that trash that's ending up in the river and in our riparian zones? Wouldn't that be a better? I think probably we're all in agreement we got too many bottles, but is there something in particular with the permit? Yeah, the, the thing in particular with the permit is that it's bottom line. They are meeting their demand with less than what they're already permitted. Who in their right mind would permit more if they don't need it? I think Marilyn made a good point that Nestle has plans that we are not aware of. They are already in effect in other parts of the world, in Europe, in Asia, in the Philippines. I spent four years in the Philippines where everybody's been drinking water. For 30 years because you can almost walk on the water there. It is so full of plastic water bottles. So that's where I'm coming from. Why give them a permit that will allow them to make more plastic bottles for water that they clearly don't need? That in fact, law, federal law says you cannot keep bottled water for more than 90 days. So where are they going to sell all that? I think it's an important question for you to ask. And I really hope that you will all take very seriously how this is going to affect not just your children and grandchildren. The next 140 years will be felt the effect of your decision on this project.